Hello, this is Kenny Moore of TaggedPDF.com, continuing a series of short tutorials intended to help optimize PDF documents for assistive technology and mobile PDF readers by meeting the new PDF accessibility requirements of the 508 refresh. This tutorial will examine an error that can only be detected by knowledgeable human inspection. And the error is this one. Table header cell not tagged as a header. The category for this error is Matterhorn Protocol Checkpoint 15 Tables. The failure condition in the Matterhorn Protocol reads a row or a column has a header cell, but that header cell is not tagged as a header. And we will also uh, take a look at an additional error, and that's this one. A TH cell, that's a table header cell, does not contain a scope attribute. So this video will present uh, a suggestion for remediating this error in Acrobat Pro and using this example PDF, which if you would like, you're welcome to download and you can use to practice fixing this error. In PAC 2, the excellent free PDF accessibility checker from Access for All, I have the example PDF loaded. So I can click Start. And you can see I get the happy green check mark that tells me this PDF is technically accessible. So just a caution, uh, technically accessible does not necessarily mean fully accessible. Uh, many PDF accessibility issues, including this one, can only be detected by knowledgeable human inspection. Now for human inspection, PAC2 includes this handy screen reader preview feature. And if I click that, we can see the document displayed in the way that it would be presented through assistive technology. So I'll expand that out a bit and we can uh, scroll down to the table. And we can see that all of the table cells have this marking TD for table data. So all of the table cells are marked as data cells. There's no header cells. So this top row should be marked as column headers. And this leftmost column should be marked as row headers. In Adobe Acrobat Pro, I am going to select the Touch Up Reading Order tool, which I have pinned to my Quick Tools toolbar for convenience. And I'm just not a fan of the dialog that comes with it, so I'm going to close that. And then I'll scroll down a bit uh, to the table, and I can right click anywhere in the table and select the Table Editor. So with the table editor selected, I'm going to select the top left cell, which I need to configure as a column header. I'm going to right click that, table cell properties, and I'm going to change this cell from a data cell to a header cell. And I need to set the scope attribute. In this case, it is a column header. So I'll set the scope to column, click OK. And then I'm going to open the, uh, the Tags pane. And I'll go ahead and drill down to our table. Open that up. And if I open the first row, I can see that that top left cell is now set to header, uh, which is beautiful. That's exactly what I wanted it to do. And if I right click it, I select Properties. And on the Tags pane of the Object Properties dialog, mm -hmm. I select Edit Attribute objects. And I open that up. Now in one or the other of these object dictionaries, I should find the scope attribute. It's not in the first one, so let me check the second one. And there it is. So the scope attribute is always accompanied by this O table. And in this case, the scope is set to column, exactly what I wanted. So now I know where the scope attribute lives. So if I need to, uh, it is possible for me to set the table cell attributes without using the table editor. And once in a while, the Acrobat Pro table editor gets confused. 
And it's usually when I'm working with a very complex table or, for example, a table that's embedded in the cell of another table. But there's occasions when the, the table editor won't let me select and configure uh, cell properties the way that I need to. So it's good to be able to do that without using the table editor. So I'm going to go ahead to the next cell and we can see that it's uh, this next cell on the top row, uh, the one marked failure condition. And I'll just go ahead and change that manually from TD to TH. So that configures it as a table header. And I'll right click that, properties, edit attribute objects, expand this out, and I can see that there's no scope attribute. I need a scope attribute. So I'm going to click new item. And that creates the other object dictionary. And it has this O layout. I need to change that. We know that it needs to be table rather than layout. Okay. Now I'm going to select that uh, object dictionary, click new item, and create the scope key. And we know that the value, in this case, is column. It could also be row if the cell is a, a row header. And it could also be both. It could have the word both. Uh, if the cell serves as a header for both a column and a row. Uh, value type is name. Very important uh, to have the value type set correctly. In this case, the default value name is correct. So I'm going to leave that as it is. And you can see now we have the scope attribute and I'll click OK and close that. So these table cell properties can be set without the table editor if necessary but uh, it's much more time consuming, much less convenient so I'm going to use the table editor whenever I can. I'm going to go back and do that now. Uh, you can see that the cells that have been set to headers are shaded pink so that you can see them in the, uh, the table editor. I'm going to select the next column header and then I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to go ahead and select all of the remaining cells that need to be set as column headers. And I'll right click, table cell properties, and then I can set them all at once. They need to be header cells and the scope in this case is column. So I'll click OK and you can see that they're now shaded pink so they've been set to headers. I'm going to do the same with the row headers. Hold down my shift key. I can select them all and configure them all at once. So table cell properties set them to from data cell to header cell and in this case the scope is row. So I'm going to click OK and that should do it. So as always working in Acrobat Pro, I'd like to save as a new file name. And I do that just in case I messed something up. Because it turns out in Acrobat Pro it's pretty easy to mess something up. And I want to be able to revert to the previous file if I need to. So now back in pack 2, I'm going to load the remediated PDF and click start and here's our good friend the happy green check mark this PDF is technically accessible it was technically accessible before I just want to make sure that I didn't uh, mess something else up while, while uh, I was working on it and I'll click the screen reader preview and expand that out a bit scroll down to our table and I can see now that I have the TH, the table header, configured on all of the top row and all of the left column. So that all looks good. Um, the preview feature in Pack 2, though, doesn't really give me a way to check the scope attribute. And uh, the predecessor to Pack 2, uh, Pack 1.3, is obsolete 
for automated checking. It's been superseded by Pack 2, but it has a different style of preview feature. And I really like the preview feature in Pack 1.3. I actually like it better than the one in Pack 2, and especially when I'm working with tables. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, load the document in Pack 1.3. and run the checker and then run the preview feature. Now the preview in pack 1.3 opens in a web browser and you can see that the table headers are shaded. So I can very quickly verify that all of the table headers are set correctly. What I really love is I can mouse over any of the table headers and it highlights the scope of that header. So I can very quickly verify that I have all of the scope properties correctly configured. Pack 1.3 is, uh, again, it's been superseded by Pack 2, uh, but it has this wonderful uh, preview feature that I really like. And it is still available on the Access for All website for free download. And very much worth uh, downloading and installing uh, for this feature alone, I, I really love the, uh, the preview feature in Pack 1.3, especially when working with tables. So this all looks good. It looks like we have a 508 compliant uh, table and uh, PDF. So this is Kenny Moore of tagpdf.com. Thank you for viewing this tutorial. Hope you found it helpful. Uh, please feel free to contact me using the Contact Kenny page at tagpdf.com. Accessibility is the right thing to do.